in our ongoing series, The Money Watch Housing Guide, whether you're looking to buy or rent, scammers may be targeting you. In 2023, over 41 million renters and homeowners were cost burdened in the U.S. That means they paid for housing with at least 30 percent of their income, and that could make them easy targets for scammers. CBS News correspondent Asher Qureshi joins us right now. And Asher, you, you want to avoid getting ripped off. That's the key. Right. But the housing scams are out there. How are they happening? Yeah, I mean, according to the FBI's Internet Crime Reports, there are nearly 70,000 reported instances of real estate and rental cybercrimes with over $1.4 billion lost between 2018 and 23. And so it's, it's a big crime, right? Yeah, and, and the idea people must be saying is, okay, what should I be looking out for? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, we work with the CBS News confirmed team to investigate housing scams, which are impacting people nationwide, especially during the search process. Now, one way scammers are targeting people is by posing as government programs for low-income housing on social media. For example, this is a PSA about a fraudulent Section 8 housing ad from a scammer using Facebook. People fill out an application thinking they're getting on a wait list or applying to low-income housing. Instead, scammers steal their information to commit fraud, according to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Now, another one is fraudulent housing listings. They often promote low price, use fake, copied, or doctored photos, and request upfront payments. Now, seller impersonation fraud is an example of this. These are emails where the scammer attempts to impersonate the legitimate owner of a vacant property and steal funds from the sale. Seller impersonation fraud. Well, it, it almost boggles the mind. You'd love to say this is all ingenious, but it's actually really an evil genius. Yes, you know? yes. And, but how do you identify, and, and this may be the ultimate question, when a deal is too good to be true? Right. I mean, it's sad to say, but you have to be like a private detective yourself, right? And be really <laughs> skeptical. Do your research. Compare prices. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Verify. Ask for a official documentation, cross-check information by making sure the contact information lines up with the property owner listed on an official website. And now, regardless of identifying the scam, how can people really protect themselves from being tricked? It's a great question, right? So be wary of a hard sell, right? And if there always, are, always, always be hard, <laughs> wary of the hard sell. And if there are any upfront costs before a housing agreement is signed, try to do an in-person tour and avoid close calls. Don't click on any links, give any information, or sign anything before you confirm legitimacy. Ask your title or real estate agent what security measures they have in place to keep you safe. And again, if if something seems off, take a pause and do your due diligence. Like we've said, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. But you pointed it out. You said you have to be almost like a detective. And I would assume, and it's a terrible thing to say, but when you hear this, you say to yourself, hey, look, forget it. Whatever you see, back off, right? Or, or at least have someone else come in and look at it. Maybe. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's the key, right, is just to keep looking, keep doing your due diligence, and, and, and look out for anything that looks suspicious, and talk to people you trust. Excellent. Great work, Usher. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it for these tips. And CBS News confirmed they will continue following the story. And remember, for the latest on interest rates or wherever you need to know about renting or buying a home, first of all, good luck. But then go to cbsnews.com slash moneywatch.